Hello, welcome to the Seafarers Tax Open Day 2014. We held these seminars in Dublin, Cork and Donegal over the dates March 12th, 13th and 21st. Okay, so I'm just going to run through the main items so we have a record of the key situations that were discussed. This is our itinerary for the next 55 minutes. Short summary on who we are. An update on the eight items every Irish seafarer must know. We're going to emphasize the records to you always keep. A tip from the 2013 seminar was to distinguish between the differences of a resident versus a non-resident seafarer. 2014 item that's arisen a fair bit has been mortgage issues that are being encountered by seafarers. Married versus single considerations. There have been major updates in the UK non-residency rules and I'm going to show the key items between the differences that are there right now and traps to avoid. Okay. We'll also have a number of examples that show you how matters work. That's us. Just Google us and you'll hit on one of these items, either our LinkedIn page, our Facebook page, our blog, which links to our website, Barry Accountants. There's our Facebook page, facebook.com slash allblackcash, and it's under our name here. Our website is barryaccountants.ie, and you can email us directly. And while you're there, if you click on services, and then click on seafarers, number one, you'll see the recording of this video. And down the bottom here, there's an online seafarers questionnaire, where if you email us, it's all confidential details of what you're up to, where you've been and all that, we'll give you an outline for free recipe on what your options are. Okay, this is our LinkedIn page, you'll find us on LinkedIn if, and if you're on it we'll connect with you if you'd like to send us an invite. And lastly this is our blog, growthaccountants.com and for instance there is details of this seminar today with the main items and you'll always find that here on our website just click on the word blog and it brings you over so once you email us we'll add your email address to our database and you'll receive free monthly newsletters on key items which you can read or not read but at least they're coming at you right eight items you must know number one okay a seafarer who qualifies for seafarer's allowance is an employee this is a new development um, as opposed to a person who works on a ship that travels to a foreign platform or port. Now in Ireland, an oil rig platform or a drill ship that's stationary is, is a foreign port. Okay, you're carrying passengers or cargo and you're a minimum of 161 days between January 1st and December 31st at sea. Okay, so that's a seafarer. It'll give you a huge tax discount of 2,600 minimum. The difference between a resident and a non-resident seafarer though the residency fairer has an Irish address, pays tax in Ireland, and is over 161 days at sea. It's pretty standard. But a non-residency fairer is someone who's much more days out of Ireland. There are only 140 days in Ireland or less in the January to December calendar year. They don't pay tax here. They have a foreign address that work for a foreign company. They are paid into a foreign bank account and they work outside of Ireland totally. So there might be sea fairer, there could be Irish but they're not resident in Ireland, okay? That's the difference between the two. A couple of items, when are you in Ireland, when are you not? Uh, if you set foot in Ireland at any time during the day, you're in Ireland, but if your boat or plane, for that matter, lands in the airport and remains in the port and you remain there, you're viewed as being airside, you're not actually in the country, you're still at sea, okay? So you could be on a a cruise ship or a ferry that's docked in Ireland, but if you don't get off the ferry or leave the confines of the port, it's still classed as being at sea and outside of Ireland, so those days count. Um, the midnight rule is a UK rule. The way it works in the UK is if you are gone by midnight, you were never there that day, that doesn't apply here. If you're here at all during the day, for instance, attending the Old Ireland and departing on a boat that afternoon, you're, you're still here, okay? So the day coming and going does count in Ireland. So the day coming, you might arrive at 3 in the morning, but you're here that day, or the day leaving, you might leave at 3 in the afternoon, you're still here. 
Now, if you qualify for the seafarer's allowance, which is 161 days at free at sea, you get an extra 6,350 tax-free per annum. This saves you a minimum of 2,600 per year, and there can be many other tax deductible expenses that we can avail of. You also get an extra tax credit if you're paying PRSI in Britain. Okay, you pay PRSI there, you tick a box here and don't pay it here, but you get an extra tax credit here to compensate you for the higher PRSI cost of paying tax in the UK. What difference does this make? Well, let's have a look here. The non-resident seafarer versus the resident seafarer. Okay. The difference is, if you're resident here, you pay tax here. If you're not resident, resident here, you don't. The only items you would pay tax on in Ireland would be income arising in Ireland, such as rents or sale of property or something like that. But certainly on your day job, you wouldn't pay tax here if you're non-resident. Okay, that's the big difference. To be non-resident, and there's no other way out of this, you must be an average of 140 days or less in the country to be classed as non-resident. That's assuming you're working outside the country, you're paid from a foreign point, and you're working for a foreign company. Okay, that's it. But 140 days or less, not 183. You can forget the 183 day rule that it's gone. So if you're 140 days on average in the country, it means you're 225 days out of it on average, okay? So just remember that the coming and going days count and it means no tax on Irish income. So that's why you got a zone at. Now starting off, it's tricky because there's a two year rule, okay? Which is the 280 day rule, which means between this year, say for instance 2014, and last year, 2013, you're no more than 280 days between the two years. So it's this year and last year divided by two, and if that is 140 days on average in the country or less, you're non resident. Okay, key item, I'll show you some examples in a moment. Continuing on from that, if you are non-resident for the following three years after you leave, you're still obliged by law to file a tax return. Now some people are non-resident for many years, they still file a tax return just proving where they are, what they're doing, and even though they're earning money, they're not earning it in a way that makes them taxable in Ireland, so just to confirm that. Just a point for all non-residents, if they have anything coming in here in Ireland, if it's less than 3,810, it's tax-free. So that's a non-resident, but they have, say, rent or something coming in in Ireland. If it's even one euro over 3,810, the whole lot is taxable below, at 20%. Okay. Type of records you need to keep. We, we like to see the discharge book, a scan of that. Proves when you got on and off the vessels. Your passport shows foreign jurisdictions you entered. Keep an A5 size diary or an online diary of where you went, just little notes, just work stuff, not private thoughts. It can be useful to double check something as it goes where you were, if you were delayed in an airport or anything like that. If you have a foreign address, we like to see a foreign address. Um, if you're working in Korea and you're staying in an apartment block there between shifts, well, the foreign address there is fine. If you've been paid for a foreign pay point, we like to know that, foreign employer, who they are. Set up a foreign bank account. It's just, it's, it's extra reinforcement that you're non-resident if you have a foreign bank account. You can have an Irish bank account and be non-resident, but you'll see in the new British rules that anything that ties you to the country is used as a way to undermine your non-residency claim. So a foreign bank account is good. Just with the offshore bank account, two institutions we like to recommend that we're not on commission or anything. One is Barclays. So if you Google Barclays Offshore, you'll come to this and it explains why it's bank offshore. It's just if you're a seafarer and you've been paid in various currencies from various locations, having one bank that's offshore with good internet access is an advantage. The main issue to do with opening the account is you might have to put in something like 5,000 or 10,000 US dollars or sterling to get it going, but so what? Uh, it suits your profession, it reinforces your non-residency if you are non-resident and it's completely secure, these are great banks, you know. Same with Lloyds, international.lloydsbank.com. Same issue here, is international banking for you? Just have a read of that and if it suits your circumstances, hi I highly recommend you open an offshore account if you are working offshore. 
Okay. A couple of things. If you're married, file separately to your wife or husband. Um, when you are working outside of Ireland, you're counting your days, holidays abroad do count as days outside of Ireland. Keep track of these as your trips to the north of Ireland if you're a Republic resident. Days where you're held up getting back on a ship royally due to weather issues or other issues such as the ash cloud or there was tensions with North Korea inside the last year which prevented a lot of people returning to South Korea because of the missiles facing towards the country. Um, a letter from your employer at the time explaining why you were late returning is a very valuable documentation on file because if you go over your days in Ireland due to these issues, uh, a letter explaining that this wasn't your choice, you know, won't be held against you and the proper days of non residency will be counted. Traps to avoid if non resident. Um, when you leave not filing for the three years, this number one opens you to a penalty of seven hundred and fifty per tax return. Secondly, it draws attention to you. But no one knows where you are, there's a tax return or POE information going in about you every year and all of a sudden it doesn't come in. A letter might issue saying where are you? Anyway. Fine at the very least call into a tax office and tell them you go abroad. But you're meant to file. But at least if you told them it's something, you will go on record. Getting the days wrong. I mean know your days well in advance. Count them properly. And run them by us if you want us to double check them. Pension planning, if you're not paying PRSI in Ireland, you won't be eligible for a contributory I Irish pension. Uh, there might be something called a non-contributory where you haven't paid into it, but you'll get it. But with all the cutbacks, I don't think that will be there for much longer. Uh, however, you can make a voluntary contribution to the PRSI people, which safeguards your pension rights here in Ireland. So at the seminar, some people were saying that they were unable to get that over the line, but it is possible I do it a fair bit. And Illness insurance. If you don't have any insurance to cover you, if you have a serious illness that puts you out of action for a couple of years, get the illness insurance. And I'll just point out a couple of things right now. Just go back to our website. We get the home page. Okay. Okay, that's the home page. But say so anyway, you, you click after that. See here it says accounting services. I'll just click on services. Book of the month, we have a recommended book of the month each year. And for February, the book of the month was Colin Rappel's Family Finance 2014. It's 10 euro last time I, I looked, I have it myself. You leave it on the mantelpiece. You buy it in any good bookshop or in Eason's. But it, it's definitely the book to have as regards uh, getting insurance or paying into the PRSI or just anything to do with Ireland generally. There's loads of tips in there, it's only a tenner, get it and we'll come to the house for that. Uh, the second thing is we subscribe to this website called Advisor Plus and it shops the market for the best deals. So for instance with insurance and the one I'd like you to have is a private life cover is serious illness cover. But in this example here now I have a fella who's going to be age 30 next birthday. The insurance cover is 50,000 but if you get seriously ill before that the 50,000 will pay out assuming it's one of the listed illnesses. 20 years and how much is that going to be? Dun 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 dun. 20 euros a month with Aviva, 15 euros a month with Caledonian, 13 euros a month with Friend First and so on. Now that's just shopping the market. Zurich 1373, New Ireland 2020. Okay, and that doesn't go up, that sticks the same for the 20 years. Um, you can take it out with any of these companies, or if you take it out with us and we receive commission, we don't receive commission on all these, on a couple of them we do, uh, but if we do, we'll, re we'll refund half it to you. So, but that's not really the point, the point is get the insurance if you don't already have it, okay? Alright, continuing on. These are real examples based on real situations. 
and but the names have changed. Okay, but there is a situation there that working month on month off well offshore. He was over 183 days out of the country, but less than 225, so he was a resident seafarer and not non-resident. Even though he's working abroad from a foreign pay point, he wasn't gone enough. But he did receive the seafarer allowance as well as his other tax credits, and he had a tax bill on 45,000 of 11,577. Okay, gives you an idea of the amounts, 26% of your income, in case you have to put money aside. This is a second example, we'll call this Girl Jane an alien. That's E.G.'s relevance there. Go back and over to France, Stella Seelink. Now, she was less than 140 days in Ireland, she was 139. Okay, but the previous year, she was much more than 139. And she didn't meet the 280 rule. The 280 is, she's 280 days in Ireland between 2012 and 2011. However, in 2013, we advised her if you were less than 30 days in Ireland in the subsequent year, so she was less than 140 days in 2012, and to make that non-resident, she had to be less than 30 days in Ireland in 2013. So she left in January, she didn't pay tax on that 50,000 for 2012, and she saved herself 14,000. Okay, so in this example, there's no look back. It's because she was gone so suddenly in the following year that she remained tax free. So and that's because she was looking ahead. This is kind of another one. This person here. Wasn't out that much in 2012. Okay, but because she was out a fierce amount in 2011. So she, so she was less than the 280 days in between 12 and 11. Um, but it was 11 that saved her. Because she was out so much in 2011, it meant that her income in 2012, which was earned abroad from a foreign employer and a foreign pay point, meant that she was tax free. Okay? So it's tricky. You have to know your days and know your rules. This was a one man band person. Effectively, they were issuing the invoice in their own name, month on, month off. And Pay a tax bill on 150,000 profit of 67,677. The people who she worked with were completely fine because she was a subcontractor as being invoiced from a limited company as opposed to from herself as a sole trader. So we formed a limited company. She, I mean, she was saving a lot of money anyway, but effectively she left, she paid herself a salary of 30 grand out of the 150, left the rest of the company and cut her tax bill by 43,600. How to do that? Her personal tax bill would be 50%. The company tax bill is 12.5%, okay? Now there's issues on how to get the money out of the company. That can be done a variety of ways that are all above board, okay? But effectively, saving money in the company is a way of building a pension for herself, okay? A few new issues that have arisen, mortgage issues. Seafarers, they're not here, they don't work here, so why would a bank give them a mortgage? Effectively, when we do people's tax returns, we also give them a set of accounts that are signed by myself as a fully qualified chartered accountant and all the rest of it. So that's proof of income. They have their non-resident bank account statements, which are proof of payment. They're filing tax returns year in, year out, which means they don't owe any tax, which gives them a tax clearance cert. They have a fine deposit saved up. They've got their life assurance either in order or they know how to get it and it's just down to the term and the interest rate as whether they want to go ahead with the mortgage. So these are issues that are standard for a bank to ask for. So if you can't produce the proof of income or you say I'm working abroad, I don't pay tax here, it doesn't go down that well. So you need to create a record. New issues on Ireland with the UK, and we don't have a border like that anymore, but just drawing the point is the foreign port. To get the seafarer allowance in the UK, the boat was pulled into a foreign port pulling into a platform isn't a foreign port, so that's not an issue here. UK waters on their website seems to cover half the world, so if you're in UK waters you have to pay tax, whether you're working for an English company or not, that's what they have. Midnight rule, as long as you're gone by midnight, you are gone from the UK, that's not the issue here. I've been asked lately what the flag of the ship is people are on, I don't know why I've been asked that, but it's coming up anyway, so, so there must be something coming down the tracks. The 183 day rule used to work there, but there's new rules out now. 
which came in on December 13. And I'll look at those now in one second, but the 183 day rule is really nearly gone there as well, which is 183 days equals six months. If you're less than six months in the UK, you don't, and you work abroad, you're a non resident, that's no longer going to be the situation. However, if you do pay UK PRSI, you will qualify for a medical card from there, which will cover a lot of items here, plus you pay less universal social charge here, okay? And you get an extra little tax credit. So these are just concessions we're seeing. Um, the UK residence rules, I'll just show them to you here now. Now there's about 130 pages in this new book that came out on December 13, but on page 9, what they say is the little flow chart. And the flow chart says there's three automatic residence tests and three automatic non-residence tests. So if you, if you basically if you pass the first automatic overseas test or you any of them, but say you pass the first one, which is you are resident in the UK for one or more tax years up to now, but in this current year you spend less than 16 days in the country, but then you're non-resident. If you pass that, that's the end of it, and you're non-resident, and there's three more like that. Okay. The second was you were resident for the last three tax years, and you spent less than 46 days in the UK. Or the third one is you work full-time overseas, and although you come to England for 91 days, you work for no more than three hours in 31 of those days, and that's tricky stuff. And then they have further... So if you don't meet any of those, the question is, are you resident? Well, it kind of looks like you are. And then we look at that, and then step one, did you spend over 183 days? If you did, you're resident. If you didn't, we can look at the overseas. And then there's two more items to look at, are you resident as well? And they're complicated, they're all complicated anyway. But to bring right to the end, even if you meet none of the tests, resident or non-resident, if you've ties with the UK, such as you grew up there, you have a house there, you have a wife there, you have children at school there, you have a car there. If there's at least two ties you have to the country, they'll, they'll claim to make you resident and try and get some tax out of you. So where that is an issue is if you're working in a tax-free zone and you haven't paid tax elsewhere, they'll be trying to tax you, okay? So you can do without those letters. So just be careful on the UK residency. It's it's not as easy for me to tell people go to England for two months because it might trigger something over there. Married versus single considerations because people's situations change. Um, if the wife is here, she's maybe entitled to children's allowance and old age pension, but we'll make sure she files a separate tax return. And if it's relevant that, she, that he's a, re a residency fair, there'll be joint tax returns, so that's one. But a non-residency fair, remember, works abroad, gets paid for abroad, abroad no services are performed in Ireland, and he's out a fair bit of the year, which leaves him here 140 days or less on average. Okay, our fees are for first year returns and setups are 840 inclusive of that, but and every year after that it drops to 615 per year. That's per tax return. To set up a new company is 615 included of that, and there's an approximate additional fees of a thousand a year. But it can be well worth it if the tax saving is to be had. And just while we're on the, the fees there for a second, if you go to About Us and Fixed Fees on our website, there's various early payment plans. So for instance, you pay within 10 days of invoice, and on, on a bill, say, of 700, there'd be 50 quid. So it'd be 100 quid knocked off, it's paid within 10 days. Or if you pay us in advance, we knock off twice that, 200 quid. Or you can pay us over four months at zero percent interest, over eleven months at eight percent interest. If you don't pay us at all, we keep adding ten percent interest a year, and we'll withdraw the work. So there's a few options there for people to look at. So that's in our about us. Go into bank account and start a year. Click just touch about us and go down to fixed fees. Okay. So that's that situation. So what to do now? Well, if you have a query, I would advise you to go back to our website, click on Services, just bring that back a small bit, 
the seafarers area here just go down to read more and down the bottom there's an online seafarers questionnaire it'll automatically after you fill it out send us in details about you and we'll give you an outline opinion for free on what your options are top questions you'll be asked are the basic stuff who you are where you live your contact details how you'd like it to contact you type of job you have have you a tax record already set up and then the key items are for the last year how many days abroad were you and where were you okay that's a key one and then in the years going back as far as you know how many days out of the republic were you and then some extra items down here if there's any gaps in your employment what were you up to who would you work for now are you a company or limited or a sole trader how often do you get paid do you paid when you're off have you a contract do you pay tax already do you pay uk national insurance do you have a discharge book are you married single have you a foreign address okay you can rattle these off and then fill in any of the last items of information you, you feel might be relevant that we haven't asked you about okay so the more you know the easier it is for us to advise you because the more you know and the more records you keep the better you'll be at providing us with relevant information for us to to advise you upon moral details keep the right records educate yourself plan ahead okay and if you want to email us any of those surveys or drop us a question do so just stick on our website and email us in and we'll add your email if you're okay with that to our database and you'll receive our newsletter every month that you can unsubscribe from any time by clicking the link at the bottom so that's it and that's me there so i'll say goodbye for now thank you